Hey everybody, today I'm going to be doing extensive testing and reviewing aviation snips. I have four different kinds here. I have the Home Depot HDX aviation snips, Linux aviation snips, WIS aviation snips, and then finally Midwest aviation snips. You'll be able to see at the end of this video exactly the differences in these aviation snips and you'll also see how maybe spending that little bit of extra can get you a much better quality product. Stay tuned and watch all of the testing that I have set up for these. I don't really have these in a particular order but I'm going to start out with the Midwest snips, move on to the Linux, then the WIS, then the HDX. The reason I'm doing this is the Midwest snips take the least amount of pressure to cut, where the HDX snips, I have to put an extreme amount of force on it to get the exact same cut through a material, and I don't want to do that at the beginning and then you think that every other one is going to take that much force. You'll be able to see that the Midwest snips will cut right through something, and then you can see the transition to that as you get into the cheaper variety of how much more pressure you need to put into something. All of the snips here today are rated for 18 gauge metal. 18 gauge metal is fairly thick. It's a lot thicker than what would be on your car. Your car would have anywhere between 22 and 26 gauge metal. An 18 gauge metal is basically like a old Cadillac from the 1970s. That real thick metal, that would be 18 gauge. And then today's cars um, are basically so thin they can't even be welded. Those are your 22 and your 26 gauge metal. They're very thin sheet metal. So with the real thin sheet metal, they're going to cut through a lot easier. And then the heavy duty 18 gauge is the maximum that they are really rated to cut. They're going to struggle a lot more with that. One other piece of metal that I'm going to be cutting through is just a simple uh, aluminum threshold. You'll find this at your house where you would transition maybe from your kitchen to your living room and you would have the carpet meet the tile. There's always a little strip of metal there where the two meet so you don't see that seam. And these typically come in three foot, four foot, six foot, or eight foot lengths. But most of the time you need to measure the opening for your door exactly to the uh, quarter inch and then you need to cut it to fit. So that's another thing that is real handy with aviation snips is they can cut through that metal threshold. So we'll start actually with the metal threshold since I have it in my hand. This is aluminum, it is not steel. The other metal I have is steel. So I'll start out with the Midwest snip. And if you're gonna do this or you are working around metal, make sure you're wearing protection on your hands and on your eyes. You don't want a metal shaving or a metal sliver getting shot into your face and you definitely don't wanna cut your hand up on any of these sharp edges. And that will happen if you're not wearing gloves. So starting out the Midwest snip, We'll cut right through this metal threshold. You can see it just, I mean, it slices right through it with relatively no effort. Next, we'll move on to the Linux. And I, like I said, I'm using the left-handed uh, cutting ones. However, left hand can also go straight. So either one you need to do with a left-handed, you can. So now the Linux. It took more pressure. It still cut through it. I want to make sure I can get a straight line. Yeah, I got a relatively straight line with the Linux. On to the WIS. This one. This one takes about as much pressure as the uh, Linux. The Midwest snip definitely was the easiest to cut, cut through. And now on to the uh, HDX Home Depot one. This is their store brand. And this one really didn't want to cut through. There we go. I mean, if you're doing like one job and you have one threshold to put in, this may work for you. But if you're doing this on any sort of a regular basis or you have multiple uses for these snips, this is something you're going to put a lot more strain into than to have a uh, better quality one. I'll try the straight cut ones now to see if that makes any sort of a difference. And this time we'll start out with the whisk. We'll turn the uh, threshold around so I have a clean surface. 
these are actually harder to cut cut through than the uh, left-handed ones. Now we'll move on to the Linux. That one cut through it. Now we'll do the Home Depot HDX ones. That actually cut through a lot easier than the uh, left-handed one with the Home Depot HDX. Now we'll try the Midwest Snip. The Midwest one was similar to the uh, Wiss in that cut. So they all can cut through it, some just take a lot more effort than others. Now we'll move on to the Baylor Belt. Something that will happen with some materials, depending on whatever snip you're using, they will bind up. So instead of cutting through it, it will bind up and get wedged in between the two blades. And the Midwest snip, their center pivot bolt, is actually threaded into the rear blade itself. So it sandwiches this front blade together. With every other one of these, they have a bolt that goes all the way through it and it's pushing these two pieces of metal together and what that does when you try to cut something these these metal for or the two um, edges of that blade are, are forcing themselves apart where the Midwest snip is actually it can't do that because it is not only bolted on the rear it's also threaded through this rear portion so it doesn't allow that flex to open up with the Baylor belt we'll just cut straight lines across it. This is pretty much impossible to do with a razor blade. Like I said, I'm not even gonna try. So we'll start with the HDX left hand cut and just cut right down that Baylor belt. It's doing a good job. Not really a ton of force needed. Now we'll move on to the whisk. Once again, still does a good job. The uh, Linux offset left hand cut. And this one is actually not cutting. You can see how it binds up. What I was telling you about how you can see the space in between that blade. It is pulling the blade apart and it, it cannot cut through this. I'll turn it over just to see if it'll cut the other side. Nope, you can definitely see that the Linux blade separates and it cannot cut through the Baylor belt. Now we'll try the Midwest snip. I'm gonna cut over further so I don't hit that same indentation that the Linux blade made. And a real good thing about these offset ones, this is a better way to demonstrate this to you than uh, with metal, but you can see that when you're cutting the material stays down below where your hands would be. Where if it was straight, the material would be coming straight at your hands. And if it's metal, it will cut your fingers. So by having it down here, the actual material stays underneath of where your hands are and it keeps the two completely separated. So the offset ones are extremely nice in that regard. So the uh, Midwest cut right through it. With um, one other thing that I am just thinking of as I'm doing this, is how these feel on the hand. If you take a look at this Midwest snip and we open it up fully. Now, my hands are extra large size gloves. Uh, I'm 6'2", so I'm not a small guy. And if you take the Midwest snip, you can see if your hand is firmly placed on the bottom, how much fingers reach over the top at, when it's fully open. So you can see my fingers up here extend over the surface of that handle and I can easily bend that down to get the force that I need to close it. So we have this one. The Linux will open up much further than this. So you can see that the Linux fully extended. There's almost no space up here. If my hands were a medium, they would just be on the side of this. It would really make it a two hand operation. But because you know, I have extra large hands. The very tip of my middle finger can still pull that center down. The whisk snip, being all the way open, is the same way. It's almost the same as Linux. It, I mean, maybe an eighth of an inch difference, but it is full. It opens up too far. And then the HDX, 
is actually the second best. It's slightly uh, not as much room as the Midwest has, but it's easier to grip than the Wiss or the Linux. So now we will move on to the metal. I don't. I I, I could cut through this baler belt with the sh the uh, straight ones, but there's really obviously no point at this point. You see that it works fine. We'll move on first to the floor tile. Now this is just a flexible, sticky floor tile. These cost about 99 cents a piece. And if you put these in a bathroom, they're not gonna line up perfectly. You need to do the center of the room and you work your way out to the edges and then you'll have to mark lines across here and then you need to cut down through it to make it fit. It's not like a ceramic tile that you need a tile saw for. You can cut right through this with snips. I don't think you can probably do it with scissors, but snips, it's no problem. I just did a bathroom with this and it was no problem whatsoever. So I'll show you how easily that it, it cuts down through here. We'll start out with the Midwest snip and we'll just go a straight line all the way down the end of it. And you can see that the material is staying below the surface. It's not hitting my hands and it's working right through it. And there you go. So the Midwest snip, no problem whatsoever. I honestly don't think any of these are gonna have a problem doing this. But the offset is what's going to matter here because the HDX one, it's going to want to run into my hand unless I fold it up. So here is the Linux one. We'll do the same line down it. And this is really just some kind of, uh, I would say like a plastic or PVC material. There's nothing to it that would really, uh, you know, mess your blade up or anything other than glue. The uh, Linux one did not leave a very clean cut. It is very um, jagged down through here. Anytime you're dealing with a snip, if you close it all the way, it's going to have a pinch point there and you're going to have, it's going to look horrible. You never want to close a snip fully, maybe two thirds of the way and then release. That gives you a nice even line. When you cut Christmas yep. paper, you don't snip, 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 snip down the end and close the blade all the way or it will leave little pinch marks. You want a nice even cut. So aviation snips are the exact same way. You want to go completely down that line without closing this all the way or it's going to look horrible. So we'll move on now to the whisk snips and cut straight down through there. This one is leaving a nice smooth edge, much smoother than the Linux left. And once again, it's no problem whatsoever. Now onto the HDX. This is going to want, the, the material is going to want to come straight into my hand. So I'm going to be forced to bend this or bend the material itself because it's going to want to come straight back at me. And as you can see, the material is coming straight back into my hand. If this was metal, that could have just cut my finger. Where the other ones, I'm offset and it goes underneath your hand. So we'll still try, well, it's hard to get a nice cut when you're doing this. Um, with a straight one because you can see how jagged that edge ended up becoming. Let's see. See how jagged that edge is? And it's because I had to bend the material and bend this out of the way to avoid hitting my hand. So that's another uh, negative part about these straight edge ones. We'll move on now to just regular sheet metal. I got this from Tractor Supply. It is a 12 inch by 18 inch piece of 26 gauge just plain sheet metal. It's not stainless steel, it's just plain steel. And what I'll do, the, the real test with a good pair of snips is how um, thin of a piece of metal it can, it can shear off the edge without either binding up or falling off. Um, any of them can cut straight in, down through the middle of here. But the, the real test for a pair of aviation snips is to cut a very thin little piece, like you're uh, shredding cheese. So I'll just give you an example. I'll start out with the uh, Midwest, and I'll cut along this edge, and you will see that it, it makes a very thin little cut up the side. I mean, I'm at the opposite side of this, so I can't even really see to get closer. If I had my head on the other side, I could do a better job with this. But it holds on. It's not binding up. It's not causing anything to fall off. And if you can see, very thin little uh, strings that it'll cut off the side of. 
we'll move on to the Whist Snip, which is also made in the USA. I have no issues with these, their manufacturer or anything like that. I think they're nicely made uh, snips. And we'll cut down to the side here again. I'll try to get about the same amount. And uh, Whist Snips, you know, really the only thing I'm I can feel any different is it's taking more pressure for me to cut this. It is cutting almost identically thin cuts, so I'm not having a problem with it binding up like the Linux had with the uh, Baylor belt. Yeah, and that did a, a fine job. We'll move on to the uh, Linux. Put that on here, see what kind of cut we can get with it. Now, this is happening again with the Linux. If we want to zoom in on this, I tried to cut the exact same uh, way as I did with the Wiss in the Midwest and it just folded over the edge. So it started to cut it and then it just bound up and it folded the edge over. So you know you wouldn't be able to make real fine cuts with the Linux. Now if I come over here let's say an, an inch I can cut down through here and it should be fine. Yeah now once I am not trying to do something along the edge the Linux still would work. But that real fine um, what we were going for with the other two it cannot achieve that. With the HDX, we'll try to do that little same thin cut along here. It's taking over twice the amount of power to just cut through this 26 gauge metal. Um, it actually cut a fairly thin slice, but the power that you have to put down on this because of the uh, leverage, however they have this thing set up, it takes a lot more pressure to cut with the uh, HDX than it did with either the Wiss or the Midwest. So I'll cut down through here again. And it, uh, it cuts down through there fine. We'll move on now to a thicker gauge metal, 22 gauge. 22 gauge is going to be about the thickest metal you will find on a vehicle on the road today that's not a classic with uh, antique license plates. We'll start out with the Midwest. And I'll just do the same thing I did with the 26 gauge. This is 22 gauge. The lower the gauge, the thicker the metal. So we'll start out with the 22 gauge. See if I can slice down through here a little bit. Yep, taking real nice, thin, precise slices off. It's not having any problem with binding up or folding over because those two pieces, that hinge bolt in the center, is actually like I said, threaded into this rear part so they it does not allow it to separate. You can see with the Midwest, it did a real nice job and uh, folded them right up. Very consistent cuts, very straight cuts. Now we'll try the Wiss. Put that on there. Same principle, it's taking a little more pressure. And it's actually awkward for me to hold this. I'm, I had to move my fingers down, if you can see. Um, with the Midwest, I can hold it like this. So this little notch here, there's only one finger in front of it. But on the whisk snip, I'm having to hold it with two fingers in front of that, one of them being up here on the metal because of the angle uh, that this opens up. My hands, my extra large hands cannot grasp onto that very comfortably. So as far as the cutting action goes though, it only takes a little bit more pressure to achieve the exact same result. Now onto the Linux. This one's going to be the same way. I have to move my finger forward because it just does not fit. This is 22 gauge metal. I'm going to try to do the thin slice on this. It may bind up also like it did with the 26 gauge or it may catch. So I'm going to sit this back. Oh, with the uh, thicker gauge metal, it actually did cut a thin slice. Two thin slices, let's see if we can get three. Okay, three, cent three thin slices it cut. Um, same amount of pressure that the whisk took, and it did not fold over like it did with the 26 gauge metal. Now we'll try the HDX ones from Home Depot. I'll put it about the same point. I'm having to 
really force this down. Okay, it does cut, but you really have to force it. It did actually cut a straight line and a thin slice, but I'm having to press this down on the workbench with the one end and then press down with my hand with the other and then hold it still. It's really, you need three hands. Um, forcing that down, it takes at minimum twice the force of the Wiss or the uh, Midwest snips to cut with the HDX. So that's 22 gauge metal. They all cut it, it did not fold over. The only difference was the amount of force needed to cut through. Now we'll move on to the 18 gauge metal. 18 gauge metal, as you can see, I mean, it really doesn't want to bend where the 26 gauge metal is just a joke. I mean, it, it, it bends very easily. So the 18 gauge metal is the thickest metal that any of these are rated to cut. And I'll start out with the Wiss. We'll try the same test. And all of these are gonna take more pressure just because this metal is a lot thicker than the other ones. So we'll start out with this, cut my slice down. All right, got the Wiss. I would say the pressure I'm having to put on this 18 gauge metal with a Wiss is equivalent to the pressure I had to use with the HDX on the uh, 22 gauge metal. So <laughs> I don't know if the HDX is gonna cut through this or not, but it might. And then, yeah, definitely a lot more pressure is needed. It is cutting straight lines through it. I didn't do quite as thin of slices because I'm afraid it's just gonna pop off of there with any of these, but uh, I wanna make sure I have a nice good grip with all this force I'm having to put on here. So we'll do three cuts, three different cuts with the whisk. It cut all three. And uh, like I said, I made them a little thicker just because the, the metal is so much heavier gauged. We'll use the Midwest snips now. It's cutting through it. I'd say the force of this one is about 80% of what it took to uh, use the Wiss snip. So it does take less force. It's not a dramatic difference with the 18 gauge metal. So I'll cut this again. And then finally, one third cut. So there you go. Okay, the uh, Midwest snip did fine. Same exact uh, thickness of cuts. I'm gonna turn this over to continue with the Linux. Start with the Linux on the end. And I'm having to do that again with my fingers because it opens up too far. Start out again. Cutting down through here. The Linux actually feels almost identical to the whisk snip with the amount of pressure I'm putting on it. It is cutting straight lines. It did not bind up and the thicknesses were all consistent. So the Linux also works fine. And finally, we move on to the HDX, which is the Home Depot Harry homeowner brand. And I will try to cut this 18 gauge metal. I don't know if it's going to work or not. I'm, I'm putting the end of the handle on the table to give myself additional leverage on this because it really doesn't want to start. Okay, it is, it's just bound up. It, won't, it will not cut 18 gauge metal. You can see here on the end, um, it's sandwiched itself in between the two blades and the HDX uh, left hand cut will not cut it. I'll try for argument's sake the HDX straight cut just to see, to give them a fair shake if it will cut it. And uh, let's see here. We'll see the uh, HDX straight cut if it will cut the 18 gauge metal. I'm gonna have to do the same thing and put the handle on the table because it just needs so much leverage to cut. Okay. All right, Home Depot's HDX brand straight cut will cut 18 gauge metal. The left hand cut would not cut it for me. I mean, maybe somebody could get it to work, but I could not. So it is taking probably at least twice the amount of force as any one of these to cut through this metal. But like I said, if you were having, uh, this is a very rare thing for you to use, 
or you're just a homeowner and you just want a set of snips in the garage that you might pick up once or twice a year, the HDX ones would probably work. Using these as a contractor, you're using them in an automotive field, you're using them in really anything other than a kitchen drawer, you really should just spend a little bit extra and get something that works a whole lot better. Um, so that's my different metal tests. The HDX had a failure with not being able to cut the 18 gauge metal. It also left a lot of burrs on the uh, sticky tile that we cut because it was not offset. And not being offset, you had to bend the tool in order to cut through this. The Linux, uh, they feel fine, except my complaints with these would be they open up too far. This white handle has already turned you know, brown after 30 minutes of use. And uh, it did bind up on the thin gauge metal and it would just, it folded over. It would not cut through it. The uh, Midwest snip and the Whist snip, like I said, both of these are made in the USA. These are both offset. These are both left hand cut. They're, they're each other's, uh, it's like Ford and Chevy right here. I mean, they're, the, they're each manufacturer's uh, snip that meets this criteria. Both, like I said, both are made in America. The Midwest snip absolutely takes less force to cut. It feels better in your hand. And when it opens up, I can actually grip onto it. Where the whisk snip, when it opens up, my fingers barely reach the top. So <clears throat> just to give you a brief overview, I hope this shows you the differences in these snips. And it shows you that even though there might be a slight difference in price, the functionality of it does really increase when you just spend that little bit extra and get made in USA. So my vote goes with Midwest Snip. My second vote would be with a Wiss. Third vote would go with a Linux. And then, of course, last place, HDX. And that's just because I do not like uh, kitchen drawer variety tools. If you like well, now you've seen firsthand that maybe spending that little bit of extra over these store brands you can pick up Made in USA brands that do a much better job. If you like this video, please click like. If you like my channel, please click subscribe. And thanks for watching.